Hi, my name is Elizabeth Jamison, and I'm absolutely honored to be here today. And the conference, The Art of the Imperfect Brain, is what my life's passion has been all about. As a brief introduction, it is my second home because of the many years I've had acquaintance with neuroscientists, the annals of neuroscience. I'm an artist who specializes in the brain and the art of the brain. I haven't always been an artist. I was a civil rights lawyer for many years, representing disadvantaged children throughout the United States. Then, one day, when I was in the park with my young children, I lost the ability to speak. After brain surgery, I was diagnosed with an incurable progressive disease, multiple sclerosis. And that began my journey of being an artist. When I was diagnosed, I felt like a bomb had exploded because I could no longer be a lawyer. And I had to redefine who I was and put the pieces of the puzzle, my brain, together. When I was diagnosed, I was left with the imagery of the MRIs, the naked brain, which to me was terrifying. And I refused to look at them. Then, after a while, I thought, no, I need to confront them, understand them, find the beauty in them, as well as the complexity in these images. Because it was my brain, and it was important for me to honor my brain and honor my illness. I want to use my legal skills in trying to make an impact in the world. I decided to make an impact on illness and disability and changing the sterile technology of science and medicine and turn it into joint ownership with the medical community and with patients like myself. By infant stands, I was handed a paintbrush and some paint and I went to town and never looked back. This is my very first attempt at using my MRIs to create art. This is a lesion that prevented my ability to speak. It's in the Brokaw's area of the brain. This is my very first painting after I was diagnosed with MS. It is a semi-abstract piece which I created using French dyes and I painted it on silk. This was my second painting in which I decided to create conversation with myself. So I have my images facing each other and engaging in intense conversation. In these paintings, I intentionally created two brains, two individuals, two separate views of living with chronic illness. I went from using silk and French dyes to printmaking. This is an etching of my profile, and I decided again to face the two brains so that they could converse. The theme of my work in general is to create conversations conversations with scientists, conversations with caregivers, conversations with medical providers, and also conversations with ourselves so we can internally process what it means to live with a progressive disease. I entitled this piece in Interrupted because it represents the puzzle of living in life with illness, putting the pieces back together again. 
after diagnosis. This is sun and moon, and it really portrays the otherworldly aspect of the brain. It's, and it's actually an eye socket, and it comes from a really ugly image of the brain, which I colorized and turned it into something extremely unexpected. This is one of the few images that are not of my brain. This is a young boy who is a research subject, and the neuroscientist asked me if I could go into my printing studio and provide an image of one of her subjects. It conveys the vulnerability of children. This tapestry is called Circuit Breaker Narrative, and it's my most personal piece and my most intimate piece. A grenade actually went off in my brain with my diagnosis, and this is how I'm trying to put the pieces of my life back together so that my pieces would have joy, sorrow, and complexity. It contains parts of my diary and articles that are controversial because it discusses the relationship between pharmaceutical companies and scientists in terms of drugs that permeate the blood-brain barrier. These issues are important for those of us who suffer from autoimmune disease because the drugs can create very serious health problems. This is an image um, which conveys the craziness of disease. It shows movement, chaos, and electric colors. This piece is called Bird Brain. It is an etching of my lower brain stem, which is a very dangerous part of the brain to have lesions on. In. I love it because, to me, it's a series of birds. That's why I made it into a, a triptych. And I love, I love it because my family has always described me as a bird brain. And now I have documented proof that I am indeed a bird brain. I was amazed that I could actually find humor in a diseased brain. This piece is called Emerging. And it's absolutely my favorite image I've ever done. It's really important to me to create images which show my diseased self with honor and respect going out into the universe. This image portrays my brain in the sunset, showing the inner self and beyond. This piece I find very romantic. I discovered a heart in the brain and a heart is known as a universal symbol of love throughout cultures. And I just made me so delighted to find a heart in my brain. I call this piece celebration. It's an angiogram of tangled blood vessels, which appear to be dancing, joyously dancing. And it made me realize how important it is to love ourselves and our disease and our imperfection. This piece is about finding intrigue and beauty in unexpected places. As my disease progresses, I no longer have use of my arms or legs, but I'm still doing art with the help of my wonderful assistant, and I'm now using embroidery and thread to produce colorful, exuberant images of the chaotic, beautiful, and imperfect brain. This conference is actually 
revolutionary in recognizing the art in scientific data. <laughs> and take 37. Elizabeth's okay. having her coffee. Oh no. And we're rolling. Boom.